Rumi, you're on a little uh, Rona vacation, aren't you? Yeah, our whole family got hit, so we all have COVID now. Sucks. <laughs> Sucks, bro. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but to keep you company, <sighs> you have a brand new Predator movie. How, how pumped? How pumped? How lucky are we that 2022, the year of our Lord, we are blessed. <laughs> we are br- blessed with a new Predator film called Prey. Um, you didn't like this one, I guess, huh? <laughs> no. Ever since The Predator came out, I'm just like, if it doesn't have a genius little fucking hacker kid, I don't want any of oh, it. Oh, I forgot about your uh, your love how, of that. How much I fucking hated that movie. Oh, I knew I, this was going to be interesting because it's it, got, it had good buzz. And I feel like <clears throat> a movie like this is so easy to walk into with shit buzz that the fact that most people were saying it was good before it was out, you're like... Yeah. Okay, I mean, how bad could it be, I guess, right? But Right. I mean, and usually when something has good buzz, it's at least entertaining. Like, there's, I mean, even The Predator had some good buzz, and... Like, people were calling this, like, the best since, you know? And you're like, well, if multiple people are saying the best since, even if it's half that good, it's still pretty good, right? I tend to agree, but we're going to talk about it. But before we get into it... Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Launchpad Pod and our website, launchpadpod.com. Check us out on YouTube. Matt's wearing a Predator shirt today. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at that buff boy. Uh, Matt's wearing a Aaron's muscle. Co- everyone's covered in mud, so I can't even see what he's <laughs> wearing. Uh, I ate some of those flowers, so I'm invisible <laughs> uh, and chilly. Um, Matt is wearing a Muscle Beach t shirt. He's wearing his, his raver outfit and a mesh shirt. <laughs> <laughs> going off his, his muscles his little nips poking through um i'm wearing a halloween three shirt because i love that movie i don't own a predator t-shirt what's wrong with me um no you gotta i mean you gotta get one i saw cavity colors has one it's just the two arms like like you son of a bitch ah, and i was like i might get that that's pretty funny i love that i just can't i try not to i mean especially at school because i wear this shit to school but like i try not to wear I feel shirts like, with bad words on them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, that's true. But I also feel like if I wore a shirt with two big muscle arms on it, and then my two big muscle arms, people would be like, "Whoa, you can't go through the the, the airplane checkpoint with yeah, those weapons." Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about it. ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. We have a look All right, welcome to Launchpad Podcast. I'm Aaron. I'm uh, Matt. Matt. Can I give a quick shout out that literally just came in? Yeah, give a quick shout out. One of my best friends in the world, Carrie Peterson, who's yeah. a, a listener from way back, <laughs> wrote me today, listening to kids stuff that can be horror. Thanks for ruining Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> my child lo- <laughs> my child loves this book and I will uh, now all I will think of is bloody mess and then the emoji that's like e- e- <laughs> 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 uh, Carrie, I love you. Thank you for listening and uh, enjoy that children's book. If you guys haven't listened, we listened. We did a, an episode a while back that was like kid stuff that could easily be horror with just a little bit of a push. Oh and yeah, there was uh, a Harold good episode. Harold and the was, Purple Crayon. Harold yeah. and the Purple Crayon. There were. Tons I was of thinking them. of that the other day. That was a really fun episode. That was a fun episode. Today's gonna be a fun episode. But Matt, I want to start. I want to take you back exactly eighteen thousand and twenty-eight days. I want to take you back to March twenty-seventh, nineteen seventy-three. Which mm. is the 45th Academy Awards. Okay. At the Academy Awards, The Godfather has just come out and it is poised to rake in everything. Francis Ford Coppola doesn't know he's about to lose Best Director to Bob Fosse for Cabaret, which is something I bet he just hated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Cabaret is a great movie, though, so I, I don't begrudge it that. But The Godfather is going to sweep a whole bunch of shit. Marlon Brando, who played the titular godfather is like i'm not coming why is marlon brando not coming because of native american rights he's standing up for something in his place he sends sachin little little feather and she gets up when he wins the oscar and she says marlon brando's not here i'm here on his behalf to speak out about how 
my people are represented in television and movies in America. And she's met with booze. Renowned asshole John Wayne is restrained from coming up and attacking her on stage. Moments later, uh, Clint Eastwood accepts an Oscar and he says, I'm accepting this Oscar for all the cowboys shot in John Ford film, John Ford films, another renowned asshole. Um, pretty amazing moment that even in 1973, people were talking about representation of Native Americans and First Peoples in movies and television. And 49 years later, we finally get a movie that's like not a Western, not commenting on like the bad conditions that America left these people in, but like its own standalone thing. And we're talking about 2022's Prey, the new Predator movie, which is like, that's wild to me that it took that long and a Predator movie to come along and be like, oh, we're going to just have Native Americans be Native Americans in a movie and not comment on them getting shot by cowboys or any other things. You're just going to have them fight a Predator. Fucking rad. So right off the bat, I was like, very interesting, Predator. Very interesting. And the story actually has multiple roots in comics. There's a couple different comics, including one that I remember reading as a kid. Dark Horse used to have Dark Horse Presents. Remember that that book? Fuck yeah. It was kind of like anthology where like what was on the cover wasn't just the only story. It was almost like a EC Comics where like that was one of the four stories in the comic. There was one about a guy who had to go on a walkabout essentially to become a man. It was like a you know a primitive culture, and he walked, he went on his walkabout and met a predator and came home with the predator, right? Yeah, which is essentially a very. I mean, the story was very streamlined. The comic book was, but this is what we have going on in uh, Predator Prey, which is, I mean, let's just get into it. You liked it, yeah? I loved it. I loved it. Like, I was so pumped by the Predator action. I have like three or four things that I'm going to nitpick and that we'll get into that I'm like, boo, but it had so many things that kept me going, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, yes, this is so fucking cool that I loved it. It is now my second or third favorite Predator movie in my list. Uh, I, I went and redid my, my rankings today and currently because it's hot on my list, uh, it goes Predator and then Prey. Uh, Predator 2 is hard to say is third. Because I love Predator 2, but sure. Predator 2 does have pacing problems in the third act where they're like, oh, we're going to have to find this Predator. And you're like, okay, you started off strong with a lot of bitch and Predator action, but then in the third act, it gets a little slow. Would you disagree? Um, n- no, I wouldn't disagree. I think, and, uh, and I think this is a really good movie, and I think this, this is a good Predator movie. But it was also a good movie. And I think some critics and some fans are kind of blurring those two lines and mixing them because I don't feel like this is a masterpiece film. And I don't feel like this is a masterpiece Predator film. But I think it's a great film and a great Predator film. And I think it's one of those things like the movies that you and I shit on that could have been good easily. The Punishers, the Hulks, the Marvel movies, the DC movies some of the newer action movies it's not i i think sometimes you and i and fans can be overly critical but at the same time it's like no and it's something you've said before you don't have to reinvent the wheel you don't have to like reinvent predator mythology so that there's now three different sects of predator like no 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 all i want to see is predator trying to hunt somebody and them faring against the predator that's really all you need right and the first one was that, right? Yeah. This one is that. It took it back to its roots in a way that I think worked because you also could have fucked it up. Really sure, absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. And there were a couple times I was like, oh, no, are you going to fuck this up? And then they're mm-hmm. like, no, we, we, we saved ourselves barely. You know, and there was like, uh, oh, good. Oh, man. It has a smart head on its shoulder in multiple ways. Like, like I was saying earlier, when I first was, you know, when I first heard it's like, it's about Native Americans. It's about a, a Comanche woman who wants to be a, a warrior. I'm like, oh no, oh this could go really badly. Like I'm just waiting to see, mm-hmm. you know, the report that's like Comanche Nation boycotting Predator movie. And you're like, oh god, come on. But they they did it right. They got real people, real actors, real Comanches, real producers. So okay, that 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 fear is gone. 
Now I'm like, well, now how are you going to fuck up a Predator movie? And they kept nailing it in the sense that mm. it's like, we're not overshowing the Predator. We're not going to add a bunch of bullshit other than cool weapons, which there's, there's this thing to, in my mind, like the Predator has cool gadgets and you can easily fuck that up by making it too weird or too sci-fi. But this had, oh, here's a couple of new things you haven't seen before that maybe have been in the comics, maybe not, but like they didn't they didn't blow me out of the water as like too sci-fi it, it fit for the world of the predator in my opinion mm. which i think well, some of the other predator movies are like i have fucking gundam guns on my show you're like stop it what are you and doing? that's the thing is i think you gotta like a lot of that i think are devices literal and figurative that the movie and the producers are trying to be like okay what did the last predator movie not have that we can put in this and you're like oh gundam guns and you're like but the predator is a hunter, a warrior, right? Why w- would that fit in that? Would that fit in with that culture? If yeah. that, if the answer is no, it doesn't make sense. So, like Predator One, he's got the the plasma caster, he's got the wrist blades, right? He's got cloaking. Okay, Predator Two, you add a spear to that, you add yeah. a net to that, you yeah. add darts to that. Okay, all those things are things hunters use, right? <clears throat> Other movies have gotten a little bit more crazy. Uh, the way that I thought about it, and I recently, I've been on a Predator kick lately. You guys saw my uh, Prime 1 big game cover statue. Yeah, fuck. If I didn't have COVID, I would have went back to school because that's in my kindergarten classroom now. I would have went back to school and brought that home so I could have it here to play with during this. But um, I've been watching, I, I rewatched Predator 1 recently, both Aliens vs. Predator movies, um, and a couple of the other sequels too. And... There's a scene in Requiem where a predator walks up to a wall in his home home world and there's multiple masks on the wall. And to me, it made me this is the first time I've thought about it. I was like, okay, I'm actually on board with that. I understand that if you're a predator, if you're a predator, if you're a warrior, you're a hunter, you have multiple different accessories and and equipment depending on where you're going, right? Like if you're going to go to a frozen place, you might need this mask. If you're going to go to a jungle place, you might need this mask. Okay, you know what? That makes sense that there'd be different designs of masks, right? So I feel like when we're thinking about weapons, it extends to that. So we've seen, you know, Predator 2, he just had a double-ended spear. Yeah. I've seen them have combi sticks, which is my favorite weapon for them, where it's like an axe type of blade on one side or the other and a spear on the other side. He kind of uh, had were, that in this movie. It's a well, pseudo, this pseudo, one, yeah. yeah, and I thought that was cool because in this one, he's got a, a pointy spear on one side and more of a blunt edge on the other side, which kind of makes sense because it's, it's both like a fighting club as well as a spear. And you're like, okay, this guy has that. And the Predator and Predator 2 had a spear. Just two different types of spears, right? Yeah. This guy has a gun. The Predator and Predator, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem had a gun not just yeah. plasma bolts instead of darts but like okay you kind of get like if you picked a hundred hunters in the world in america in, in america slash earth they would all have guns but they would all have different type of guns that did different things and were made specifically for different game yeah I and think i think it all this works. movie yeah. fed into that I, which i liked and and <clears throat> his his style i think worked and i i i, I really liked the predators know, the- or traxenberg <laughs> The, oh, yeah, the, who are you talking about? Um, the Predator style. I think I liked the mask. The, the bone mask was kind of cool. I liked the weapons. Um, uh, I didn't like his look. His when, when This is the okay, first wait, time wait, I've... Let's, let's point by point. Let's get to that? Yeah. St- well, because I, I, I... We're on more of the same page, it seems. I thought I was going to question some stuff that you were going to get mad at me about, but it seems like we're on the same page. First of all, mask. You like the mask? I do. It's the first time I wish he had kept it on the whole time because i'm a big i like i'm a mask off predator guy. i like the predator yes mask i know off. i'm a mask on and, guy well except in this movie the face fair was yeah fucked i did up. not like that so <laughs> i i understand a justification for it and i don't know if this is true hey we need this is the one of the first times they're like hey we know it's a guy in a suit but let's make it look alien let's make sure that there's no possible way you're going to look at them and go yeah that's just a guy in a mask his they got shit for making the eyes too human in the AVP films. They were literally like human eyes. Right. Um, 
I don't know. This one, the eyes are too far apart. He looks like a bad taxidermy. <laughs> well, his face is not the regular predator face. Like they, no. if you look at the AVP faces versus the regular predator faces, the mandibles are a little bit different. The layouts are different. And like you said, the eyes are a big difference, but they still look like predators. This looks like, this almost looks like one of the predator dogs from what movie predators? The predator? Pre- no, predators. No, no, no. And, and the, the predator. predator. Yeah, the, the one the with predator. the dome heads yeah. that they shoot and then they yeah, yeah, come yeah. like tame or something. Um, it was predator esque, but it was like it was not the predator that we know. And I don't know if there's a reason for that or not. But I, th- I think I think they're just trying to say there's different races of predators, like you know, which like, okay, like they they did set this up in the movie Predators, where they go to the uh, they go to the planet and they're getting hunted, and there were like different types of yeah, predators. there's like a predator and a super predator, yeah, and stuff like that. But it's like okay, but why do they have to look that? I don't know. I wasn't into it, but at the end of the day, you didn't you didn't kill me on that. Like it, it, it's, I, a I, it's a small yeah, gripe. It's yeah, it's a small gripe. Yeah, because at the end of the day, uh, he did enough cool shit. Um, let, let's kind of. The mask is cool, man. I think the mask was really cool. The bone mask felt like he had hunted something. It wasn't as technologically advanced as other masks we've seen in the past. This sure. predator is a I'm willing to get down and dirty. Like he has a gun, but like most of the time he's trying to fight things with his bare hands. This yeah. guy is he likes to get dirty and he likes to fucking feel it. He wants to choke the life out of something, rip it in half with his bare hands. So I didn't like the mask at first because it was the fact like at first uh, when I saw stills, I was like, OK, he's got a um, <laughs> an analog mask, like an old school actual mass mask. But no, we immediately see that it has the thermal. We later see that it has the three, the three red dot aimer. Then I started to notice if you look around the crest of it, there is metal. So it clearly is married technology. Then I did some research. And apparently there are some creatures called river ghosts that were in predators that we see a little bit. They had a bigger role, blah, blah, blah. But okay, this is a creature that we know from canon that the predators hunt. That made me like more okay and accepting of it. And also small gripe. I guess I want to see a regular mask, but like, okay, that's fine. Um, I didn't care for the shield thing he had. I thought it was a cool weapon. Design wise. It, okay. Let me ask this question. You didn't care for it because of its design or predator shouldn't have a shield. Predator shouldn't have a shield. Absolutely. Interesting. Okay. I, I, the, the, the design, I like it. And I like what they did with it. Cause like when she's hiding between those two rocks and he's trying to get in there, when he chops the guy's head off, Dude, against when he the chops tree, that guy's head off, like, come on. I was like, for me again, like I don't think a predator should have a shield. That's a warrior, not a hunter. However, yeah. This is a movie. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. And like, if they made the predator have a blimp, I'd be like, what the fuck does he have a blimp for? (laughs) But when he's got a shield in the middle of that fight that he's then chopping heads off and trying to snip her head off with it. And then she's able to do a a cool move where she kicks it into his hand. Fine. Okay. You've justified it to me. You've justified it. And that's the thing. You didn't just go, you know, it'd be cool guys shield. And then you're like, okay, but why did you give that to him? Right, right, right. in in the predator they kept doing this thing or even in a, some of the avp they're like he's got claws extra big claws and right. it's like <laughs> why? why why does he have extra big claws <laughs> like like that's that's okay i i should be going cool but at the end of the day you didn't justify it and there's no point so why why did right. you do that just because yeah, yeah. you thought it would be cool this at least had purpose Yes, you thought it was cool, but then you're like, now we have to make sure that that shield has purpose. His weapons get fucked up, and he's using the shield as people are shooting him with muskets. Great. Right. Okay. And then he chops somebody's head off with it. Great. This also had so many times where it would do setup and payoff. Agreed. I agree. That's a, I didn't think of that, but you're right. Where it shows that he can cut somebody's head off with that shield, and then when she is trapped under the rock and he's trying to push the shield down, you're like, don't get your head cut off. Like It made sense. Um, let's start at the beginning a little bit. Uh, we have Naru. She is our uh, protagonist. She is a Comanche uh, woman who uh, hates scavenging, which I do not blame her. Digging up carrots all day looks like it sucks. <laughs> um, and so she wants to be a hunter. And her and her dog, which, oh my God, the entire movie, I have high anxiety because I'm like, this is where the dog dies. This is where the dog dies. And then the dog lives. I'm like, fucking dog. Come on. Either die or live. 
but I am so tired of the anxiety this dog is causing me. <laughs> I, you know, now that I think of it, I'm glad the predator didn't also have a dog and that there wasn't a dog face off because yeah. that would have been adorable, but not in a predator movie. <laughs> uh, um, something I think this movie did that no other predator movie has done, which sets it up way above for me. I think invisible predator is kind of stupid. This movie made invisible predator fucking cool because they're, Filmic techniques for showing Invisible Predator was bad ass. We see a snake. We see a rat. Yeah, we're panning yeah, yeah. through. Now we're in the distorted cloaking of an Invisible Predator as the snake eats the rat and then the predator rips the snake in half. This movie is full of how do we use the distortion of the invisibility to do really cool things cinematically? And I'm like, that's fucking amazing. We've never seen anything like that since like the invisible man really the one that most recently came out mm -hmm. fucking awesome that was great yeah. and we never get to see invisible predator doing bitching shit like that until now i thought was that that continually impressed me with the uh, the snake with no skin is a cool scare um you know the cinematography in this movie fight, cool. there's a bear fight dude when the wolf had the the green blood dripping out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah, that was that pretty cool. Was fucking cool. Um, I, I I have multiple times on here where I'm like, use of invisibility, awesome. Uh, use of <laughs> like, uh, and then when he kills the wolf and cleans its skull, we got to see like see it for once, yeah, like yeah, him yeah. hitting it with the nitrogen or whatever he hits it with, and the the, the skin falls off, and he's got the skull. Is like that's badass. Well, this is you know you got to think of this movie, right? This is the eighth something, ninth something movie. In a Predator franchise, right? I guess sure. theoretically it's the fifth it's, in it's, the Predator. It's the seventh if you include AVPs. AVPs, right? Okay. So, but like still, we've seen this many Predator movies. In the first Predator movie, when you're watching it clean for the first time, you don't know what a Predator is. You don't know what it does. You don't know what it looks like. So when you start to see the Predator doing shit, you see his thermal, then you start to see the shimmer, right? You see the cloaking. You, it, it's all building. It's all suspense. It's tension. It's building that up to the moment where you see him come around that tree and flash the cloak off and flash it back on. When you're watching any of the movies after that, even Predator 2 all the way till now, you know what a fucking Predator looks like. It doesn't matter if they change the, 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 the specific aesthetics. You still know what it is. So when you have this movie, even though this Predator was drastically different than most before it, the directors now have this this thing that they can use to kind of draw you in and make you want more Predator throughout the movie because that's what the first one did, right? You're like, oh yeah. my God, look, it's invisible. What does it really look like? What is it going to do? So I think this movie for the X number in the franchise does a really good job with that where they're like, we're not going to give you the whole thing right away. You got to wait. First, here's an ant crawling on the ground, and then it starts crawling up in the air. Fucking and cool. you're like, we know what's happening because we've seen it five other times, six other times now. All the invisibility tricks tricks were really a treat for me. Trick or treat. Um, I that because because I get that it's a it's you know it's a CGI thing, but they thought about it. They said, what's been done, what hasn't been done, and you could have done that with oh the, the predator's weapons what hasn't been done but they're like what hasn't been done that's simple what hasn't been done in the things that we do how do you reveal a predator have him rip a bear in half and the blood coats him till you yeah. see him was... i'm high-fiving my wife i'm high-fiving the dog every, you know everybody i'm just like <laughs> that moment alone had me like what the fuck that was what so i cool. would have liked to see for the pr invisibility there is Literally, invisibility is just one sense, right? Yeah. A bear and a wolf should be able to smell him. Now, granted, they're also very visual-based animals. Well, the wolf totally did. The wolf was on it. But it would have been cool if they explored that a little bit more. And the predator, like, we got the the notion that the predator was surprised. Because that would have been cool if the predator was like, oh, I'm invisible. And the wolf was like, that doesn't make a huge difference to me. And the predator was like, oh, shit. I, I can't rely on that. You know what I mean? I guess that's hard to develop the predator side of shit for that. Yeah, you don't get a lot of um, you don't character get a lot of development yeah, character development on him. Yeah, which I mean, you do in the comic books, which I think this also really 
um, stayed true to what the comics would be. This felt like a, a Predator comic book that I Absolutely. like. Absolutely. You know, it's a one off. It doesn't need more. It doesn't try to do more. It just does bitch and predator shit. Yeah. Um, you know, I I thought he, the invis the use of invisibility was so cool. Like when he's running through the water, him walking through the mud. Um, I thought the animals were fairly successful. We have a mountain lion. We have bears. We have wolves. We have snakes. We have rats. Um, I thought they were pretty successful. Um, I've seen some people complain about the CGI, and I, uh, you know, as there a professional, some, there were better moments. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have any issues with the CGI. It was not enough to ruin or hurt the movie. I no, think. no, not, none of it. Felt I think the good shit, like there were times in the fighting and stuff with him, which is where I would have wanted them to spend their money on. If the bear didn't look great every shot, every frame, okay, like yeah. it's not I a mean, bear movie. I, I don't, yeah, I don't expect the bear to be. You didn't have a real bear, so I'm not mad that you went as far as you did. And <laughs> you had him doing a lot of cool shit. And yeah. when you have the dog stacked up against a CGI bear and it's not like that that's that's taking a big sure. chance. Here's a real animal, here's a fake animal. It didn't uh, we've seen much worse. And like that's the thing. It's like it, it stood it didn't stand out to me as drastically terrible when you actually have real animal versus fake animal. Well, I, like, I read that. that like months and months before filming the bear trainer and the dog trainer would work together so that the actual dog and the CGI bear kind of became like comfortable with each other so that on screen, there was not a lot of discrepancy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that you saw where that was going when I started. Yeah, I wasn't going to get you that time. No, you, yeah. Yeah. The second you said there was a bear trainer. Um, I, I yeah, I love the reveal. The blood reveal is cool. Um, our characters are cool. Um, Characters are great. First of all, pretty well written. I have a lot of problems with her up and down, but in general, well written, smartly written, and well acted. I thought her and her brother were really strong actors for this people is, that I'm not familiar with. I know it was his first movie. I don't think it was her. No, she's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. This is oddly his enough, she's been in a movie called Hell or High Water, which is actually a two issue Predator comic. Oh, weird. Um, <laughs> There's yeah, my deep nerd. A Amber Mid Mid Thunder is uh, she plays Naru, and then um, her brother uh, is played by a guy named Dakota Beavers, which makes me funny because at one point she says a line like "I'm smarter than a beaver," and his yeah. name is Dakota Beavers. Yeah, um, but uh, it, I thought he was a great actor. I thought all of them were, um, and and you know it's pretty straightforward stuff. She wants to be a warrior. Everybody's like, "No, you're a girl. Go go pick carrots in the woods." And, um, you know, she proves herself time and time again. Um, I, I, I liked that she was um, not perfect. She failed quite a bit. Like, Multiple times, yeah. She tries to fight this mountain lion and fails. And she tries to, you know, she gets stuck in the mud. And she's constantly, like, in situations that she gets captured. She's constantly in situations that shows... She is in over her head, literally in over her head in certain situations. So her fighting the predator, you're like, I don't think you have this. And she has to rise to that occasion. See, that was something that I always felt like was an issue with even the first Predator movie. There's no way Arnold Schwarzenegger is losing to this guy, right? Like they are both physically matched. She has a huge under, she's, she's a huge underdog mm. because She's not the Predator's size equal. She is not technologically advanced. She has kept getting her ass kicked literally by nature. Other animals, like she is always in the shit, but she's smart. And that's where I think the, the best thing you can do. And, and, and in failures, when we see movies where characters are too smart for their own damn good, you know, or never fail. Star Wars, I'm looking at you. Um, she, she, is interesting in her flaws and interesting in the shit. I know she's the hero, but I don't think she's got this. And then she proves to you just like she has to prove to everybody else in the story that she does have it. And that's fucking cool. That's a good so, story. That's a, that's a good character. Um, uh, you know, problems to have. I agree with four fifths of that. And at the beginning of the movie, it's very clear. Okay. I'm the girl who's going to, you know, rise and, and, and get this, get this done. But then she does, like you said, fail so many times. But I like that because I was prepared for the one or two fails that are required as the first steps of her hero's journey. And then she turns it. But then she keeps tripping over herself and the predator keeps disregarding her. 
the other um, um, Braves and hunting party keep shitting on her and disregarding her to the point where like, I'm like, okay, when is she going to rise? And I don't think she had an actual arc. And I would love if you d- disagree, tell me, I would love to see if there was a point where she was down, she rose up and then continued. Cause to me, it felt like she was just not doing it and then just did it. It's so, not, not until her brother dies. So, so he, here's but like, but yeah. even before, no, because I disagree with that because she like, let, let's, let's go through it. Right. She wants to be a, a hunter. So they let her come with her or she goes with them for the lion. She tangles with the lion falls off and her brother kills the lion. It's revealed later that he says your idea worked and you weakened the lion. You just couldn't kind of finish it. But like, okay, that's a good step on her hero's journey, right? Then she's going through and we see some predator stuff. She runs around with the bear, right? She gets away from the predator at that point. Uh, she the she fights the brave, the the other like brave leader fights him and does pretty well against him until they finally tie her up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then in that fight. The Predator kills all the other Native Americans. Fucking awesome fight scene, right. by the way. Great, yep, absolutely great scene. Leaves her, right? Doesn't worry about her. Um, She runs into that field with the other guy. The Predator stalks them and kills that guy. How good was that blood spray? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking great. In the wide, in the wide yeah. of the, uh, the grass. Great. Yeah. Yeah. They did a really good, you know, I, well, we'll talk about that. Well, it's like the Gareth yeah, fin- Edward fin- Godzilla of like showing Godzilla on the screens and, you know, the movie screens in the background. It's like, oh, that's a cool way to show that. But now you got to show me Godzilla. This did a good job of like bloody predator with bear blood and, you know, the ants crawling on his leg and fighting the wolf invisible. But then at the end and in the, you know, fighting the guys in the, the burned forest and stuff. Um, Sidetrack. She gets stuck in the bear trap. The predator comes over and decides she's not worth it. And he yeah. retreats when all the French trappers and stuff come, right? Mm. Then the French trappers take advantage of her and her brother and they tie him up and they put him in the in the forests. The burnt the predator down forest, com- yeah. Predator comes and kills everybody in there. She is smart and gets out, right? She's able to get out of there. Then sh- he says, I'll go get the ho- horses. And she says, okay, I'll meet you back at the village. She goes back to that village and just murders like six French guys, like a predator, unbelievable fighting, throwing that fucking hatchet all over the place, chopping people, stabbing people through the face. And you're like, whoa, like a minute ago, you walked into a bear trap. Like now you're this badass fighter. And then she stops being a badass fighter. Once the predator shows up, she can't do anything again. She misloads the gun, which, okay, that's new technology for her. She doesn't get it. But then, like, I also thought the guy's death was a little Boba Fetish, where her brother, Beaver's death, where he was like, uh, you know, he thinks I'm the threat. You should go. And she's like, no, we'll do it together. He's like, no, this is it for me. And then he gets killed. It's like, I wish wish he had an injury or something that promoted that, that, that speech he had. Because why would he be telling her to leave instead of fucking finding the predator, right? I, I, I always hate the sanctimonious, like, you go, I'm going to die. And you're like, okay. I, I agree. I agree. But, okay, so so keep fin- finish this. So, she, so, yeah. she's, so she's standing there, right? Mm-hmm. She tries to shoot. shoot their fight. The predator and the brother are fighting. She tries to shoot him. The gun doesn't, doesn't work. work. She still yells out, hey. He looks at her and the, predator, the brother then fights him. Then his brother says, get out of here. She she runs away, right? The brother dies. She actually she watches the brother die. Yeah. When she watches the brother get stabbed. The predator comes towards her and sees if she's a threat. The brother stabs him in the leg. He fucking destroys the brother right in front of her, and she runs away. Yeah. So now we know she. This is the same thing she keeps doing, right? Failing upwards, where she can't quite do it. So she runs away. The mother gets the the news that the dead the brother is dead, and the girl traps the trapper right now it's at that point i guess at the river when she's washing her hands where she decides i can do this first i'm gonna get this fucking guy and i'm gonna use him as bait to get the predator right Mm -hmm. 
So it's at that moment that she decides, okay, I really am going to do this. To me, especially the way she gets the predator, and uh, we'll go into this, I guess, as we get there. What I would have liked to see is like we've we've talked about how she's smart. The brother, when they're against the tree, the brother says, "You always see the things that I don't see." I like that. What I would have liked was I would have liked some more speci- specificity. I think he should have said, "You always adapt." That here's, would have been the thing to do. Here's her arc. It's her realizing that the way she's going to win and succeed in life is not by trying to beat other people at the things they're good at. She's not going to beat the Comanche warrior at his own. He's a, he's a master fighter. Her fighting him, she's going to lose. She's not going to beat the predator in a hand-to-hand combat. She's not going to beat the predator with a gun, uh, her, somebody else's gun. She has to beat the predator at the thing she at at the way that she adapts at the at the like you said the things she's smart at the way she gets away from things the way she figures things out she we saw her use her ingenuity to escape that mud pit in the first place that's how she's going to beat the predator is using her own ingenuity in things that she figures out not at beating him at his own game which they continually show again and again is her trying to beat people at their expertise and at their game when at mm. the end of the day it has to be on her terms and her own smarts that saves the day and to me that's the arc um it is a little muddied because it's like she keeps trying the wrong thing but uh at the end of the day we saw her succeed and that's the thing that came back to get it but the thing for me is like i wanted i want that message to be more clear if that is your main message and here's and like i think you and i are pretty smart i think i'm pretty smart i don't need everything laid out for me but also you have a frenchman give her a gun and it's very much like Here is your lightsaber. Here is this crucial tool in your final battle. And it's like, number one, have that be something literally alien to her. It's so against anything she knows. She doesn't know anything about it. To make that the end all be all seems very contrary to like her whole structure of belief and systems and everything. And then that's exactly why it didn't work. That's exactly why it couldn't work. I would have been. I disagree because take that like literally. She ends up killing the predator, spoiler alert, everybody, with the predator's gun. And granted, that is an adaptation that she has developed where she's like, oh, wait, this is how this works. I can use this to my advantage and set a trap. But we just know she's smart. I just wish they would. I guess I wanted it to include the word adaption, adaptation, adapt somewhere in there so that I mean, they even talk about it on the tree. If they had said adapt, that's the thing. We're all stuck in our own ways. You keep adapting. Then we would see that gun. It makes a better gun. It makes a better. Damn, everyone. I'm sorry me. they didn't use the one word you needed to make this an A plus. Still <laughs> troll. <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> Terrible. I didn't like. Well, I, just, I, I thought it was a very like. I I didn't like the the trap at the end. That's that's. It's too convenient to me. Um, because like, what if just, he wasn't exactly where the helmet was? Right, playing? but it also doesn't make sense. But. We'll we'll get there, I guess. No, so that, 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 yeah. but so so I, I I see what you're saying. Um, I disagree, uh, but you're not 100 percent wrong. You're you you pretty pretty right, but at the same time, I th- I do think it showed an arc. Can I give it props? Sure, because I just shat on it a bit. I thought this is a great movie for feminine, like or or, or heroine, where it's not saying. I'm going to do this even though I'm a girl. Let's yeah. get them, girls. It didn't do that at all. No. It was just like, I mean, her sex, her gender doesn't really matter at no point. Well, you could have had the, the same movie with a weak guy. The only exactly, difference, absolutely. The only difference is that her gender role is go pick shit in the forest. And she's like, no, fuck that. Right. Which, and I, but I like that they you know. didn't push, push, push the gender aspect of it because that always, to me, shines too much of a light on it. And like Marvel does that all the time. But I thought this was just like, I'm a badass regardless, regardless of sex and gender. And like you said, I have a preordained role that I'm supposed to play, and I'm going to step outside that. And the movie did a great job by just making her a fucking badass. And I do like the brother and sister relationship. And I also really, really liked how the movie um, foiled her and the predator against each other. Sometimes uh, in, 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 in shots that cut to each other, like the predator fixing himself after that 
burned up forest battle cuts to her putting salve on her wounds. I also thought the beginning when we we learned that she knows medicine and she has all this different medicine, medicinal stuff in her pouches. I was like, she's a fucking pre-. like that's what the predators have. Yeah. The predators have all that shit. She's got her tomahawk. She's got her knife. She's got all these medicines on her. I was like, that's fucking cool that we're just so streamlining the two characters and their their um, similarities. You know, I thought that was a really cool, cool way to show that. Well, and you're exemplifying sort of in the original, it exemplifies how like fucking manly everything is. Like right. the predator's got muscles. Arnold Schwarzenegger's got muscles. The predator's like fucking bad. They're both sharpening their sticks. sticks. Yeah, exactly. And I thought this did a great job of um, showing off like other things. Like the predator's strength is just a formidable assumption, but like he also has weapons. And like th- th- you're right, they did a great job of showing this. One of my favorite moments of the movie is when you realized. Oh my gosh, look at all these people the predator gets to kill. It's the moment we show up at the French trappers camp. Yeah. <laughs> she gets she gets caught in a trap and uh in a, in like a bear trap and an animal trap and she gets kidnapped by the French and the second we see the French camp and there's like a hundred dudes there, I was like, Oh, all these people are gonna die. I cannot wait. Because up to this point, I was like, Oh man, the predator like picking off all these Comanche warriors, like obviously they're fodder. But they're not like I, I don't want they're like they're kind you know, of you're good. not cheering for them. Yeah, they're kids. kind of the good guys. Oh, here's these assholes. I can cheer about their yeah. deaths. And oh boy, do I get to. We have this bitch and badass scene. It's like a um a burnt forest, like a forest fire. There's ash floating in the air. There's all this smoke. And um Naru and her brother are tied to a tree and they're the bait. And the predator shows up and just starts fucking up French dudes. Just, just, just wholesale slaughter. One of my favorite kills is he picks up a bear trap and throws it into a dude's head. Boom. Chops a guy's head off with the shield. Boom. Got that net thing and he ties it around a guy and it starts going and like tightens him down, tightens him down, then like shreds through the tree and his body. I was like, this is great. One of my favorite kills there. I guess it's not one of my favorite kills, but it's one of my favorite shots. He's on his back because they, they, he steps in a trap. They pull the trap out from under him, throw a net on top of him. Yeah. So he's surrounded by French guys and he's standing on, he's laying on his back. The camera is low. You could see kind of over the shoulder of his head and a guy, a French guy leans in and he grabs the guy and you hear the wrist blades, but the French guy, the top of the French guy's head is out of frame. So as the camera then moves, you see the top of the French guy's head and it's revealed that the predator has gauntlet risk. And I just, that shot is so cool. It's straight out of the comics. I could easily see that. And I just thought that was such an easy, cool reveal. Awesome. But so it just awesome. lent itself to the scene. I just, I love that shot. So, I watched so, it twice. I watched it a little bit today and a little, well, I watched the whole thing two days ago and I watched a little bit of it today too. And it was just, come on, man. That's great. Here's a question. Uh, he then does this thing with his wrist gauntlet. He's like, beep, boop, beep, boop. He throws it down and it's like, dee, 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 dee. And all the guys like lean into it. And then these things pop up. And then in a wide, we see big explosions, but we don't see the aftermath. Mm-hmm. At first, I was like, boo, you didn't show it. And then I was like, wait, we just saw him wholesale slaughter like 50 guys. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a cool punctuation because they did it in a really cool like way where she's walking up a hill in the background. You see doo, 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 right. all these explosions. And I was like, I don't, I guess we don't need to see it. And the reason I think that it's smart is because we just saw all these awesome, really intricate kills and anything you did at that point, you could, you could basically go backwards. Like you, you have, you have piqued my interest, kill, kill, kill. They're all awesome. I'm all amped up. And I was disappointed that I didn't get to see these. But at the end of the day, if you had showed them, what if they're not as cool as the stuff you just showed me? So doing it in a wide kind of just just kind of puts a blows out the candle as opposed to like try to add more icing on the cake. I thought it was kind of a cool way to do it. The the thing I didn't like about that was the like. These little things come up and it's like, remember the, remember the movie Batteries Not Included? It's exactly what they look like. But then yeah. like, you don't really know what happened. I mean, I guess they were some sort of explosive things, but they also had little spikes that came out. It just created more questions than answers. And it was like, unless they were trying to be coy by making me want to know what it was, it, you didn't need those batteries not included thing it could have just been the risk gauntlet laying there 
beep, 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 and then cut to the wide. It would have been the same thing. But to have those things, and then they all ran away. Like, fuck, it just was like too much. Like, what, what, what is happening well, there? I, I think that's why not showing what they did is kind of a funny thing. You're like, well, what were those things? I- oh, then I would have built it up even more then to make it even more um, dramatic. Make it more like make it a bigger thing than just like batteries not included things. I mean, but they, regardless, they, they, that it was shoot okay. up a scene, man. That was like chawing it up. You're like, oh god. And and again, I, I, I that's why I kind of in hindsight, I'm like, I like that they cut away because now you're like, what the mm. fuck were those things? They're leaving <laughs> it for another time. Um. So here's something that my wife and I kept discussing because we're like, the dog or the brother is dead. D- d- either of them have to die. Mm. And. We were getting to a point where I'm like, ah, I don't know if the brother's going to die. And yeah, it's like, why? I, and I was like, because to kill the dog or the brother to drive her into something, the only reason they die is to give her the strength to do the next thing. Mm-hmm. And we've already missed the two act breaks. We are well into the third act. Right. So it's like, they're either going to die in the first act or the second act to drive her into the next thing. So he's got, oh, he dies right now. <laughs> and it was like, literally, we're talking <laughs> about it. And then he's like, and gets like, big spike through the chest. I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> well, I was okay with that because I didn't know. I remember when I was watching that for the first time, that scene where they're now in the French camp after she's killed the remaining French people. And the two of them are kind of mostly the brother, but the two of them are fighting the predator. I was like, he better not be the one that deals the most damage to the predator. Yeah. Cause I was like, this is supposed to be about her. He better not be a, 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 a crucial part to this fight. Then I realized that was not the climactic fight there. No, um, which I thought was good. But like, you know, you know how it is. Story structure says if, yeah. if, if one of the main characters is going to die to give the other main character the, the push to keep going, it's like right. it, it, there's only like five places it can happen. And they did it about as late as possible. The only other late one is he lives to the end and then just dies because he's an idiot. Like, <laughs> like the last possible second, which I hate. Like, ugh. He basically did that though. He's like, "I'm gonna go die. You go, you go win." And you're like, "Come on, dude! You like you said, he needed to be more injured than he was to have right. that happen." Uh, my next favorite part is when um, she cuts off the trapper's leg, and then the next time we see him, his legs cut off, and there's rats chewing on it. That was fucking gnarly. Yeah, that was awesome. Fucking great. Ugh. Um. Yeah, she just gets bloodthirsty with those French, almost like. You almost wanted to see the French mistreat her a little bit more or do more wrong to the brother because she says you bled my brother. So now I'll bleed you. But like all they did was like cut him once. And if someone cut my sister, I'd be mad. But like they killed the buffalo, the sacred buffalo. I understand that. But they don't. She doesn't say that or demonstrate. She does. She says you killed the buffalo. And like, and sees that them because yeah. Well, she, that's when she realizes they did that. You killed eh, the bubble. I just <clears throat> um, also. I mean, anybody who has ever read anything about history knows that French fur trappers and the um, native Canadians and Americans was never a good thing. Um, it went horribly wrong. Um, it well, here's the weird thing though: is yes, the French were terrible, terrible to the Native Americans. But for a minute there, they're like, hey, you guys want to band up and fuck Americans up? And they were like, cool. And there's this thing called the um, <laughs> King John's War. There was like a, a, a Native American war where the French were basically backing Native Americans in this like, as, as like a terrorist group to go fuck up settlers. And uh, just before the Salem witch trials, they were going through this whole thing where they were just like, but then the French and the Native Americans had a split, like they broke their treaty. And then that's when it turned into open season. So it's like, the French and the Native Americans used to back each other, and so it was hard for the Americans to to fight, you know, kill Native Americans. But then once the treaty broke off, it was it was a horrible. Are you suggesting that predators had something to do with why that treaty broke? <laughs> 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 I'm just saying it was a gnarly fucking time, dude. Because 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 that because nobody had like a clear like firepower advantage. It was all like a war of like horror show shit. It's like you're going to walk down the woods and suddenly find like 10 heads on spikes with like intestines, like spelling out like happy birthday, like in the ground, you know, something just to, just to fuck with your head. And then like everybody's like, well, we have to one up it. So it just was this gnarly like horror show war. So but yes, yes, they I, I, I think they did a good job because I'm really glad they didn't get like creepy with it. Um, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, they, yeah. 
it could have gotten. I thought, re- I thought that so too, but at the same time, like, okay, I don't speak French though. Yeah, I don't speak French though. Right. They might have been like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 mademoiselle. Um, well, she she cuts the guy's leg off and uh, rats and everything, and that's because she's making a trap for the predator because she figured it out, right? She figured out if she eats this orange flower, he won't be able to see her, which I thought was cool. I like that. Yeah. Did not I like that. Me. It's a new way to do the same thing. When she first went into the, um, excuse me, when she first went into the quicksand, the quick mud, whatever, I thought that was going to be that. And I was like, you're going to really make it that one-to-one to the original where you can't see him because of mud. Nope. But they did do a couple good callbacks. I mean, her laying there in that is obviously a visual homage to that. Well, and then the visual homage is when she gets him caught in the mud and he rises out of it. It's the it's the Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. rising out Tell of it. Yeah. I was like, ah, this is so fucking cool. Um, so she 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 set a trap for the predator, and now she turns into an ultimate badass fighter again. I like that last fight, but the fact of how it was shot and the fact that it was at night. It was a couple things where I had to like rewind and be like, wait, what what did she grab from him? Where did she, how did she cut his arm off? And then you're like, okay, I, I get I understand what's happening, but only because I'm smart and know how movies work. It's not really because you did a good job showing that. Sure. Like at one point it looks like she grabs one of his mandibles, breaks yeah. it off, and stabs him with it, right? That's exactly what happened. I had to watch that twice to see that that's what that was. Well, you wear glasses. Are my maybe? eyes slower than you? Yeah. You wear glasses, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> all right fair the second that happened i was like oh man she ripped off his mouth dick and stabbed him in the face <laughs> <laughs> Fucking high, five. High, five. <laughs> high five and everybody i thought that was cool uh i don't know if you can i mean okay let's just say that it's as strong as a finger his mandibles i don't think i could rip somebody's finger off that easily i literally had the same thought this morning while we watching it i was like okay let's let's assume that that's exposed bone right it's like a tooth yeah, I was like, if my if my tooth was sticking out like that, then I thought like a finger. I mean, if could you if I just went like this, do you think you could just rip it right off? I could rip your ear off. I don't think I could rip your finger off. <laughs> I mean, an ear only takes eight pounds of pressure, but a finger probably takes a lot. Like to to pop the knuckle the out, bones. And, yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know. You could rip chicken. Like, I mean. I don't know if chicken is more strong than human oh, or shit. yeah, dude. Gaucha. I'm breaking I'm breaking chicken bones all day. Um, yeah, like hmm. think like think about you have a carver turkey. Yeah, I mean like I sometimes you cut you cut. It's hard to get through like the bone and the gristle of like the joints, so you just fucking rip it. Yeah, but I have been hacking at it with like a pretty sizable knife before I get to do all right, that. Let's make a and this is good mixture of Native American culture too. Let's remember this Thanksgiving. No knives for turkey, okay? Only ripping and see if we think we can grab, we can break off a predator mandible. <laughs> and because Thanksgiving pseudo racist, let's make it just predator giving. So I pick up the turkey over my head and just, <laughs> just rip it in half. Just, just that's that's really like <laughs> cranberry my- sauce pours all over you, and then I can see you. I'm at the family Thanksgiving. They're like, Aaron, would you like to carve the turkey? Ah! <laughs> How about the fact that this predator could could lift a bear? Did that surprise you at all? Uh, it was so goddamn cool. I don't care. I was trying to think. I was like, okay, could could Arnold's predator lift a bear? Uh, I saw Lou Ferrigno lift a bear and throw him into the air. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know that Arnold's stronger than Lou Ferrigno. All right, according, fair enough. According to Arnold, so... <laughs> so that's, that's one of my favorite things in uh what's that famous arnold schwarzenegger pump, pumping iron or whatever where it's mm-hmm. the arnold and he's like lou lou look how much i'm benching look he can't hear me it's so funny lou look and he's just like <laughs> he, he he's brutal in that movie i know um <laughs> dick to the death all right so i want to talk about the design of the predator a little bit but let's finish up here so we've got this this pretty good climactic fight in the woods. Yeah. She set some traps in advance, and he. Uh, some of the traps I don't think make sense, but like okay, whatever. Yeah. So and also I'm going to pretend that this predator is like inexperienced. He might not be the most seasoned hunter. Oh, I th- I think he's a rage machine. Yeah, he 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 isn't tactical. He's like I'm gonna like when he fights the Comanches, he just like shows up and is like I'm gonna kick your ass now, and like 
just mops the floor. With and he it. takes a lot of damage, which yeah. to me is like brawler, right? Like that's Wolverine fighting versus he's, Captain America fighting. I'll take the shots. I'll literally get shot yeah. in the back of the head if it means I can then just turn around and kill you. I'll take that hit first. He's called he the does feral point, predator. Point, again, yeah, yeah they, I saw they that. call him the feral predator, which I don't know if I would say he's feral but he's agreed it's fucking cool yeah feral things can't drive spaceships assholes but that's okay you know <laughs> um but yeah we know he he's not afraid to soak up damage we see him get shot a lot of times what are you laughing at the feral predator to me plays in the predator band called dr teeth and the <laughs> <laughs> and he has a chain around his neck and he plays the drums he's like ah, predator and then they like let him off his leash and then throw him down to earth to fight for a little bit like that to me is like the feral predator right but um this well, guy's- feral predator sounds almost like the super predator from the predator right this guy yeah well <sighs> like even feral that was- made did that even that guy yeah. was super right at to me this is like the bear grills of predator he's like i'm gonna go down with as little gadgetry as i can and just survive right, right. and like fuck shit up i'm like you know he's he literally is like he's like i'm on a reality show it's called uh surviving with hey Feral guys predator. like and subscribe <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> he's like last night i couldn't catch a snake so i have to boil my water um i i drank water before i boiled it and i'm shitting it everywhere <laughs> like that's that's what he, he's having a survivalist show bear grills predator. predator i like that yeah he's the bear grill, grills predator well he's he's having he's having a good fight they're, they're they're a good fight he's not afraid to take some damage with her and she's doing a good job. She eventually wrestles him. Well, I mean, the, this fight starts by her shooting him in the back of the head. Yeah. Right. Because she can't see <laughs> With her. A flint but lock. then out of nowhere, he can like kind of see her now because the rest of the fight, he knows where she is. Right. I don't think she's trying to hide either. And also, when you start running with that stuff, like, I think you're going to heat up more than the oh, flowers. But they didn't show, again, they didn't show that. Now, here's something. Because well, he doesn't have his helmet to show it. Now, here's something interesting. In Predator 1, he sees Thermal the whole movie until he gets his helmet knocked off or well, well, pulled off because in the first one, it's pulled off. When he pulls it off, there's a POV of the Thermal turning into this like red, mushy colors. And it clearly is not as good as the Thermal Vision. So Predator 1 for sure establishes that you they see different than Thermal without the mask. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In Predator 2... When the mask is removed, he still sees thermal, which I lose sleep over. No, that's yeah, that is a problem in editing for Predator Two. Yeah, for sure. Which is why Predator Two is now third on my list. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we see his POV in this after his mask is removed. No, but no, then he were, also can they just were smarter see her, than to try and do that. <laughs> but he could just see her fine the rest of the time. But like, okay, fine. She takes his mask and places it we see her place it but we don't really we're not really supposed to know where yeah. she places it very specifically and then fights him turns out she ends up pulling him into the mud she's stuck in the in the brambles waiting for him she does the i thought this movie was very good with those fun little nods without being too on the nose like she didn't yeah. yell get to the job but like she said said and did a bunch of things so did the brother that are very strict callbacks to the first one or other exactly thing. And it's fun and, it's and, fun. and if it bleeds we can kill it was about as on the nose as you got great callback because and it made sense yeah, it was it, it was sense. it contextual it worked for there here's where the predator failed for me is constantly in the dialogue it's like yes. remember <laughs> yeah. remember that time we got to get wink, to wink, the wink, choppers wink wink no, wink no, wink wink it's like don't. stop it oh my god stop it i saw I, I get it i saw you were in the fucking movie i saw it stop it i still like that movie i mean the, the predator but i agree with you that was a little ham-fisted it, it was um, too macho for its own good the dialogue was just stupid and and like just offensively love stupid too. i hate that kid Ugh. so predator comes out of the mud now and you know, bitching homage to Arnold Schwarzenegger and pulls this thing from his back that I thought was a sword the whole time, but it's a gun. No, they showed it. And that he is pulls a gun it out of his back. In the air. Yeah, they showed and the he, arrows firing in the first thing when she realizes what the three little dots, three dots are. Yeah. Right. She pulls this gun on her and shoots her, shoots at her with the gun. The bolt, the dart misses her, goes all the way around and shoots him in the head because. He's standing in the way of his own helmet. 
this is the only part of the I hated it. Um, I hated it as well. <laughs> this is the only part of the movie that I actually hate that I think is a bad decision. Mm-hmm. Um, but the movie was so damn good. I'm I'm like uh, fine, fine. You could have done it so many ways and and still done it. I don't think the helmet would kill the predator. But she could have like had it on the other side and like at the last second done the Medusa thing, you know, uh, famous yeah, yeah. M- Medusa. He holds up the uh, Perseus holds up the head of Medusa. It fires into a it fires into a mirror and then and then turns the, the bad guy to stone. Um, but like she could have like at the last second whipped that helmet out and and had the same effect. It's just you are setting it up in a way that like you don't know where he was going to fall in the mud. You have no way of knowing. At right. where exactly he's gonna that take thing. the shot from that exact spot. spot. You don't even know he's gonna whip that shit out and try and shoot you. Like, how did you know any of that would happen? I would have preferred that she had taken like the net launcher and thrown that on him and it just sucks him into the mud. There's there's any number of ways that like with the same idea, using his technology right, right. In, in a clever way, she figures out how to use it. Or w- when she pulled out that he had these like wrist ba- <laughs> these slap bracelets that like could shoot <laughs> the fuck up. And when she whips that, I was like, oh, that's going to get him because she's going to throw it. It's going to like get wrapped around his neck and go and cut his head off. I thought she was going to find one of the little floating uh, batteries, not included things and, and mm-hmm. use that on him. Any number of things. This was way too convenient for me. But at the end of the day, fine. I thought that the in the original Predator, him just blowing himself up as a cop out. So I, I guess I can't be mad if the final kill is kind of a cop out. It doesn't have, it's not like it doesn't have precedent at this point. It's just like you did so many things right, movie. Why is this the, why here are you? Yeah, you couldn't, just like her for most of the movie, the movie couldn't take it home, right? Yeah. Now, I, especially, they spent so much time establishing she's a badass with this tomahawk, right? Then she, puts the scorpion chain on it get over here oh which she makes in like five minutes i dare you to go out okay first of all fine you you have to soak (laughs) to make bark rope you have to soak the bark for at least like 10 hours you have to like really soak the shit out of that stuff otherwise time yeah fine whatever anyway but like (laughs) she they they established that so much i assumed that that was going to be her go-to weapon and that that's what she was going to champion him with uh, so I kind of was like bummed that she ended up killing him with his own technology, especially if it was not a point that was made in the movie. It was not about your strength is adaptation. Your strength is figuring shit out that none of us can. Like, it wasn't that. It was just you see things from different angles. That's not using the Predator's own gun against him. Now, the problem I have with that last trap she sets with that dark, the Predator dark gun goes for me way more simplistic than you didn't know exactly where he was going to stand. This is an otherworldly being, right? Who fucking, I mean, even if he's dropped here, he still came in a race of creatures that drive spaceships. So he's a little smart. He has a helmet that has a smart aimer, right? Mm -hmm. And they show us when the helmet gets knocked off and it's aiming at the tree, he shoots and it shoots the tree. He shoots three times and it shoots the tree, the tree three times. Now, number one, does that predator not understand that that gun is not free aiming and that it will shoot the the laser dots wherever that is? He doesn't know where his mask is. For all he knows, that thing's going to go like 100 yards away into some tree. Well, that's the thing. So like he when he first gets his mask knocked off, right? The first time. Yeah. He gets the mask knocked off. We see it aiming at the tree. She sees it aiming at the tree. It's where she gets the idea. Yeah. So what is like, honestly, I'm literally asking, does the predator not understand that? Because if you had a weapon that only could operate based on where that was, if you didn't know where that was, why would you try to use that weapon? Wouldn't you flip the toggle on your gun? That's like auto aim off and shoot her right in the face. (laughs) You think that right Yeah. now, like as stupid as that sounds, that's fucking like what? Also, the aimer doesn't make sense because when they're when she and the guy, there was a brave that had black. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a black. The guy had to take a piss. Yeah. Yes. Well, take a squat. He's there in the grass. He gets three dots on his face and he's like, we got him. And she's like, no, he has us. She nudges him and the dart flies by him. But the darts were on him. 
So wouldn't they still circle back? Like, like that's a, that's a smaller thing. Let's say that doesn't work. I just don't understand the predator. Even and even if you were like, oh, the predator never used that gun before, or he's dumb, or, or any other thing that makes sense. We watched the predator in a situation where he shot that gun ineffectively, and the outcome was it went to where the helmet was aiming. You could make the argument that the predator didn't realize that's what was happening, but like, why would you shoot a gun that you didn't think was gonna like that? Doesn't make sense. Why would he go for that weapon? If he didn't have the aimer for it. I also think that the helmet is tied to a power source of some sort, right? Like, is the helmet even, should the helmet even work if it's not attached to him? I don't know. That's maybe nitpicking. But I mean, say say that it does. It just doesn't seem to make sense that you would use no, something yeah. that you don't know where the other piece of it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if it's a two-part piece, if it's a two-part weapon, I need the aimer and I need the gun <laughs> right. and I've lost the aimer part. What are you doing? Um, yeah, no, I, I did not like. I did not like the last thirty seconds of uh, otherwise. <laughs> up until that point, had been a nearly like perfect Predator film to me. But again, it had done so well that it, it's a wash for me. Like it doesn't. Mm, yeah, it I agree. Doesn't I agree. Tank the movie. Uh, There's so many worse things in any of the other Predator films that I'm not like. Oh, I'm mad at it. It's just kind of like meh. You could have done better. You had done better. You've been doing better the entire time. And here's where you're just like meh. Well, it's a mistake, but still, I think, like I said before, as a movie, it's a good movie. As an action movie, like take Predator out of it and put in a werewolf or a different alien yeah. or an ogre. The movie works. It's the still, movie works. It's and, still an and interesting, suspenseful movie. Here's the other reason it doesn't tank it completely for me. Here's the other reason, like this, this kill isn't the worst for me. She used her smarts to best the predator sure right right it works on her end uh, it works on her end she uses she uses his technology to best him that's the important part of to take away from that fine whether it worked or not is i don't think so but it didn't ruin the movie for me because right after that it's it's basically she gets awarded you know she becomes war chief because she shows up with a fucking monster head and then and um, nobody in that village thinks twice like nobody looks down as like fuck like granted they might not be um open-minded and understanding enough to understand like it came from beyond but like no one's like shit we never saw a bear like that they're all just like hey good good job way to go uh i love how she shows back up with his blood all over her that's fucking cool Mm -hmm. um like in the poster and then i like at the end it goes into like these um you know like uh, wait before that the flintlock pistol that shows up in Predator Two. Yeah, cool. I, I thought that was a cool little nod, and it's like there's a, there is a Predator comic book story that explains where that gun came from. So now you have kind of two conflicting things that still could be in the same universe. But it was that was again that was a cool nod to be like, hey, we're part of this franchise, but this isn't the Predator's father and Danny Glover's, you know, great 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 grandmother. Fuck no, man, don't fucking doesn't have to be that connected. Just make it same universe, right? Yeah. yeah, okay, cool credit sequence. Cool credit sequence. And then at the end of the credit sequence, one of these, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know Almost how to like describe it. like hieroglyphics type thing. Hieroglyphics, like cave, cave painting. painting type yeah, stuff. yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, Depicting it tells the, the events story. in the movie. Yeah, and then at the end, you see the part you just saw, and then it shows all the people, like, looking up in the sky and, like, multiple predator ships show up. Yeah. But pretty cool. I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, so you could have a sequel to this, which, fine, I'll watch a sequel to this. Absolutely. Totally. Just don't fuck it up. Yeah, don't also don't overextend my goodwill towards how cool this was. <laughs> <laughs> don't take advantage of me, Prey. Yeah, exactly. Like you did a great you you killed it. Great job. I don't know if you have two in you. I, I think just let's let's follow this formula again. Let's just keep telling predator stories. Yeah, don't make a sequel to this story. Just make a predator hunting somebody else, right? Yeah. yeah. Or adapt any 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 of the hundreds of bitchin predator comics strange Rue, do it sands of time do it what's the one about the cold war or the uh not the cold uh, war the, like the russian revolution like predator cold war that's the name oh of predator cold war that's do my favorite that. one fucking yeah. do any of those they're already there for you just adapt them into a bitchin movie you can do it i promise you can do it 
uh, take my idea. Call me up. Let's do a Predator Pinhead crossover. We can do this, guys. Like, it doesn't even need to be like it just needs to be like this movie is essentially the first one. The first one and the second one are very similar. There's a lot of differences, but it's one man who's like, oh, shit, a predator. How am I going to deal with this? And the predator is like, ah, he's the most formidable person in this movie. That's what you got to do. That's all you got to do. It's such a simple thing. You should be able to pump one of these out every couple of years. <laughs> it does not have to be hard. It doesn't even have to be unique because guess what? I'll watch this formula over and yeah, over and I over agree. again. Yeah. I've read this formula over and over and over again. The scenario is not unique. It's the location and the warriors. That is the unique thing. And then the weapons, like you don't need to expand the mythos. He shows up, he hunts somebody or somebody's. You can have multiple people. Fine. Just it's it's almost too simple. But like as we've seen with with Punisher, it's the simplicity is what kills it. People are like, oh, that's too simple. You got to do it right. And Trachtenberg did a good job with this where it's like, okay, we've crafted we. We understand the Comanche um, lifestyle. We understand that she has these expected roles. We understand that she's pushing against it. Here's examples of her trying and failing. Here's yeah. examples of her trying and succeeding. I will argue and now we have a predator. They're better characters than in the first movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, is not I a would character say that. in that movie. The other, the, the, his other people are better characters than he is in that well, movie. Well, because he's just the hero. He's just an action hero. That's his character, yeah. right? I'm this big badass. And they're like, yeah, basically infallible, unstoppable action yeah. hero, which and, is a trope. I get it. But like, you're right. It's not. And I guess, I guess that's interesting. If you stack this movie against that movie, you almost can't compare it too directly because they're different, right? Predator well, One is an 80s action movie. Yeah. This movie is not. Not and, an 80s action and movie. They're not the same. It's it's very interesting because I would argue that this movie is better crafted as like, how do you yes. tell a movie? Well, you need characters. Right. In it's an a 80s better action, film, yeah, right? In 80s action movies, I don't need character because you're like, here's the bad guy. Here's the badass with the muscles. And you're like, got it. Done. Yeah. And, you know, again, what is it? Whereas like, here's the girl who's in it to be scared and then run away and, and specifically pinpoint that the predator will not kill an unarmed civilian type character. That's the only reason we have that girl. And, I, and yeah. the, and the minority component of like, my people know this creature. I, I, I think that, you know, the first one is a great eighties action film. And the fact that this one's like, I'm going to follow that same formula, but not be an eighties action movie is very interesting. Um, Man, it gives it points, man. Uh, again, it, if it wasn't for that crappy last kill, this could be a contender for better than the original. No. If you if if you were well, could be, it's not going to be because I love 80s action movies, but I'm just saying it could be a contender for being a better movie if they didn't like fuck up that ending. It's like a better film like you could, I I would say that like, well, can't think of a great example. I was going to say Star Wars, but that's not really it's a better film. Like it's got better characters. It has better arcs. It does sure. better, you know, um, setups and payoffs, both with characters and devices and stories. But like the first one creates all this mythos. It's and so the good. fact it's the so fact that it good. was born in the you know nineteen eighty seven. It, it's, yeah. I mean, it set the standard for a lot of shit. And it just did that movie is so badass. It's like an action movie. The first quarter stalking movie the second quarter well not quarter third second third and the last third is just mano a mano you know hunter yeah. versus hunter god it's so, so good. fucking good so fucking good yeah no it, it 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 will not overtake uh but i i do that's why right now it's number two on my list prey i think is i think prey is a great a great film a good predator entry and a good blueprint this is what you have to do look back at the original look why we thought that was good the second movie i think is is another good blueprint but i think it overextended itself it takes too long to get to the the final fight but it does a great job setting it up mm -hmm. um uh, uh, briefly because because we're, we're getting long here but um i do want to say uh how do you where does predators the the adrian brody one the the robert rodriguez predators where does that land for you what do you saw my list right now for things to rewatch? because i think that's one of those movies where i want to give it more credit and every time i watch it i'm like meh it's not bad and i like it's like they created these three distinct hunters that all do hunter-esque things 
but I don't like it. Like I don't like Falconer Predator. I don't like the Predator with the hounds. But like those are hunting tropes. I just don't think I don't tried think they to do, fit. I don't care. Here's what I will say. I think it tried to do too much in one movie. Yeah, that's probably true. It was like, hey, here's this, and then there's this, and there's a, then there's the dogs, and you're on this planet, and you're also doing this and this, and you're like, and there's Jesus also Christ. Lawrence Fishburne is there, and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Lawrence Fishburne was there as a yeah, previous, like a, and he's got like a helmet. He's got like a predator helmet, like he's yeah, a survivor. Yeah, I do like I, I. The one thing they did that I did like was I like that um, that '70s show is there, and he's a serial killer, but that's revealed later. Yeah. I thought that was cool. I like that. I thought it, that was a good little. It's one of my favorite things he's done since that '70s show. Fuck Venom. <laughs> <This Yeah. is> <laughs> <great>. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, um where does Re- how, where does Requiem fall for you? AVP Requiem. Can I just tell you, I just watched the both of them. I told you Aliens vs. Predator and Requiem. Yeah. Aliens vs. Predator has so much wrong with it. And it's yeah. so needlessly stupid. But if you could just not worry about that for a second, be like, I'm watching Aliens and Predators. It, it's okay. Requiem, I like. Yes. It is not great. Yes. It should be the comics. But is it one predator kicking ass? Yes. Does the predator not give a shit about the people? Yes. Is that cool? Yes. Yes. Does the story kind of make sense for what it is? Yes. I like the design of the predator. I don't like the predator, the big hulking predators in AVP. I don't like them. It doesn't fit. Well, and they're stupid human eyes. That bugs the shit out of me. Oh, I totally agree. Um, The thing I love about Requiem is it doesn't give a fuck. It keeps surprising me because remember I said like if you have a key character that's supposed to die, it has to happen here, 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 here. There's yeah. only there's only like four or five places you can do it. Requiem says, "Oh yeah, that's what you right. think," and just like you know this you, main human character, job, yeah, randomly kills them in weird places, which is fucking cool. Kills a bunch of pregnant women. They don't give a fuck. Kills mm-hmm. a child first. Yep. Doesn't give a fuck. Yep. So I got invited to the cast and crew screening of AVP Requiem by Steve Wang. And who designed the Pred Alien for that movie? And I'm like, oh, the last one sucked. I'm not going to say no. And I went, was like blown away about how fucking cool it was. And everybody, yeah. like, the fact that it gets shit on so much, I'm like, I don't understand why this one gets shit on so much. And the last one, like, I don't, maybe people think they both suck, but I think Requiem actually made up for how shitty the last one was. It's, so it's not like, great, but it's very, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It, it's, it's, better than the predator and it's better than avp it's it's what i want to see in this showdown do you pull off all the pieces of it no but is this what i signed up for yes you know what i think it is when you said pieces it clicked for me i think that movie has the pieces in it that i want in that movie but no real discernible through story or narrative that i care about i don't care about any of the characters that's what it is as a film for me to like a movie, to, to take a journey with you for an hour and a half, two hours, where you're going to tell me a story, that movie kind of fails. But does it have bitch and predator and alien costumes? Yes. Does it have bitch and effects? Yes. Does, does, does it look cool? Does it look like those worlds? Yes. Are there great kills? Yes. Does it shit on any of the other lore in the either franchise? No, no, where I feel like AVP did shit on stuff. AVP shit so, on everything. AVP was you, like, oh, yeah, 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 we get it. There's forget about it. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I like, know about your Predator stuff. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I, I like, know what wait. I'm doing. <laughs> you're like, wait, none the of this predi- makes the sense. The guns are in boxes. Yeah, and they're, they're like, hey, remember the awesome comic this is based off of? <laughs> yeah, shit there's two Predators that. getting their asses kicked by a single alien each immediately. God you're like, damn it. What? So stupid. So Aliens, I think that's what it is. Requiem has all those pieces and does those things well but not in a good story, not in a good movie. It's almost like if you played, if you had a great singer and great instruments in a song, but the song sucked, you'd be like, the singing was great. The song is terrible. I love the guitar. The song is terrible. I feel like that's kind of like maybe what Requiem could be thought of as, at least in my opinion. I, 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 well, I don't think it's terrible. I think it just isn't as good as any of the other ones. I just think it's not a good movie. Is it better than Predator's? I, well, that's the thing. I got to rewatch Predators okay. because okay, Requiem okay. is a movie. If you and I live together, I could see you and I being like, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know. I don't really feel like watching something new. 
You want to throw on Requiem? Because well, yeah. we're going to be entertained for the hour and a half, even though we just said it's not a good movie. Like, I guess it's like Shitty Movie Sunday. We never watch a good movie for Shitty Movie Sunday, but we're entertained. I got to watch Predators and see, do you have enough cool Predator shit in there for me to like it? Because that's what Requiem has. Here's, Either that or a good movie, you know? Here's a good litmus test. There's not enough in Requiem for me to shit on. I might yeah, not like it true. as good as something else. It delivers on a Predalien. Say what you want about, like how they use it but they deliver on it at least it says hey we're trying to do a predator right. we've never seen it before you tried it good for you you could pop on the predator for shitty movie sunday and rip that shit apart you could pop on the original avp and shit all over it yeah i think you're right that's right that's that's our, our whole thing when we lived together remember we had the nerd scale yeah and the nerd we were arguing Aaron and i were arguing about the nerd scale being different than the cool scale Meaning that, like, I can be this high on the nerd scale, but also this high on the cool scale. This is kind of like that, where you're saying you could take a movie and think of all the good stuff in it, but you don't necessarily have to judge it by that. You judge it by how shitty the shit stuff is. Yeah, right? Exactly. That's, that's when you have to start taking that into consideration. And I don't think there's enough for me to shit on for Requiem. I think it's, I think it's smack dab in the middle of, of the franchise. Like, it's fine. Um, but I'll probably re- want to revisit Requiem before I want to re- revisit Predators. Yeah, I think that's true. But I, I, I'll I'll let you know because that's on my list of things to watch. Maybe even today. Now that now that we're talking about it so much. Well, guys, let us know what you thought about Prey. Let us know what your favorite Predator movies are. What are your favorite Predator tropes? Where does uh where do the other movies fall in your ranking? I'd love to hear it. Hit us up on social media: Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Launchpad Pod on our website launchpadpod.com. Check us out on YouTube. Check out Matt's awesome uh, titties out shirt. <laughs> uh, Predator shirt. Um, he's covered in bear blood right now. Uh, <laughs> that's the only- I had to order this shit from Russia. Isn't that a good shirt, though? It's a great shirt. I love um, it. Yeah, Rumi, let's blast this thing off. Want some candy? <laughs> <laughs> We're the Rocketeers and we are out. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine 